Welcome to part nine of my building the 1884 Chaperone Steamer. And I think at a glance you can tell I've made progress. And uh, it was refreshing to get back from vacation and get right back into the build. Let me take you step by step on the accomplishments that I've made. I had a bit of a disaster when I was putting the skylights on top. It has a little bit of a bow to it and I took an oversized clamp and while I was trying to push it down, something slipped and I really crunched down on this side. I actually broke out these windows and I cracked this top deck or this deck. And even though I could take it off and kind of super glue the, the deck back together at the crack, it still showed. So what I decided to do was much like on the real ship, I applied paper, they, they did felt, and then they covered it with tar. So then put on the flat black paint, and I have no crack, so that's good. I also happened to own a laser printer, so I was able to cut out these few windows and actually make them exactly the same as they were. So tragedies happen, and you just have to work through them, and I was able to work through that. You'll see in the video where I use the, the paper as we progress onward. Remember how I don't like that puzzle piece that is across in this general area right here, about the halfway point. It just drives me crazy. And I know that this deck was covered in felt and then tarred. So I thought, why don't I do the same thing? I used butcher block paper. I've glued this down and now I'm gonna paint over it with the flat black. It eliminates that puzzle piece there. I do have a little line up here. We'll see what happens with the paint. But actually, if they laid down some type of a felt uh, and then painted it, they would have a few lines too. So that was the decision I made, and I think these holes will be hidden once I paint everything black. And I could always put a little piece of paper in there. Here is my corrected rooftop that I had cracked and that's turned out pretty well. I'm happy with it. Repairs are made. I built this guardrail system based on the blueprint drawings and at this stage but if you read the instruction manual it says to pre-make them but consider delaying putting them on the ship because they can be fragile and you could break them off. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in place. There's more than enough fragile things around here that I think I can work around it. There, there's another one up here at the front of the ship. I'm currently building the stairway to connect to that, and then I'll decide whether to put it in place or wait until later. I'm assembling this little staircase, and what it was worked out best for me, put a little dab of glue on a pin and then put it put it inside that way I don't get glue on the sides trying to fit that riser in there shouldn't take very much glue I can kind of spread this open a little bit with my fingers cuz the glue is set up pretty well We've got one more here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and let those dry, and then I'll come back and put the step part in. I'm working on this staircase that goes up to the hurricane deck, and for reference, this sidewall piece is 87, and some of the... Um, risers are I think 118. The thing that's important to do is put the the risers in first so that's the back of the step and that is because you need that extra thickness to get the the step to stick out far enough and put a drop of adhesive on each side And 
and then put the step in place. Also, this the step material, real thin, and also the laser left a lot of uh, soot. And there's a little tag right there on each side, just one. You're going to need to make sure that you sand that off. Otherwise, you'll have that nub, and it'll not give you the proper size to get in there. Now, if you want on one side of the step, or the riser for that matter, you could dab a little glue because you can put that part in first and then drop the other one in place and not worry about getting glue on the sides. Here's the completed staircase ready to be mounted on the ship. But there's enough flexibility here that I was able to gently lift up on the deck and slide that staircase into place. Currently I'm working on the stage boom. It uses a 5-32nd inch dowel, length seven and a quarter in inches. It also is a full size image of the part. Let me show you how I made the taper on this particular boom. There are several ways you can taper masts and different parts of a ship. For me, this huge belt sander works better than anything else. This is real fine sandpaper on here. And I just kind of lightly hold my hand and will rotate this dowel rod back and forth. I've done most of it. I'm just going to do it just a little bit more. Take it over and put it on the plans and show you what it looks like. Here's the drawing of the dowel rod in actual size, and here's the one that I'm making. I could actually taper it down just a little more. Here, this piece is completed. It's got some uh, rings on it and some strapping, and then there's a little brass coupling here the pivots in a couple different ways. This will get attached to that. And there's little holes on each side. I'll pre-drill that. This this will come out. I haven't put this in place yet. So that will go there. And then this will pivot many different ways, this way and up and down. Some of my viewers are about to be horrified because here are my smokestacks. They are not finished, so don't panic. They go a lot lower, so this will go all the way to the bottom. The instructions have you use a paper cone. I had these wooden uh, cone-shaped, uh, I don't know even what they were from. I picked them up at Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to use those instead. So this will lower all the way down. This will be seen under this deck. Still don't panic. So here they are after I did the copper uh, coating and then aged them with the ammonia formula. Now, inside here, where you see the plain wood, I will paint that black. And for those of you that are in a total panic, I'm going to take my airbrush and I'm going to airbrush these with the flat black. It'll just be a misting because I want them darker. Obviously, that's that's too much patina, it overpowers the ship. So that will be my next step. As many of you know, I'm relatively new to airbrushing. Actually, I'm gonna start on the bottom so I get a little practice in. I also wanna put on a, a glove so I can spray paint my hand. Here they are after I spray painted them. A little more of the look that I was trying to get. And it's probably kind of hard to show. I'm trying to light them up. But they're, they're quite dark, but they have a little of the aqua patina to them and also a little touch of the copper look to them also. If you're interested, I am using a Master Airbrush Model G22. And that's how she sits, just off of my workbench.
This is another view and I'll hold the camera and I can uh, give you a better idea of the coloration that I achieved. So now you can really see the aqua. If, uh, if I so want, I can always put a little more of the dark paint on it, but I'm, I'm happy with them. And then inside the smoke sack, you can see that I did that pretty dark. Another thing that I did, I did drill down into this dowel rod a little bit so that if you look down, you just didn't see the flat top of it. I was hoping that I'd get down far enough that it would appear hollow. I did use the paper ones that the instructions suggested. Well, not really paper, it's cardstock. And so those turned out well. Now I did not cut those out by hand. What I did is I uh, made a photo of it and then was able to transfer it into a drawing file draw it out and I cut them on my laser machine. This fascinates me. I love using it. I'm not a master yet. If I ever get it figured out pretty well, I'll, I'll do a special on it, but uh, a lot of fun, but you could not put this in your home and run it. It creates a, some really strong smoke odor and you do have to keep an eye on it because you could actually catch something on fire. So, be careful if you consider getting a laser cutter, etcher, engraver. This one's fairly powerful. It puts out a 10 watt burn so it can go pretty deep into the wood. Instead of using the cardstock to make rings around the smoke sacks, this is a tarred twine that I have. And I like it, it looks kind of like rolled steel. So what I what I'm doing is twisting it real tight and then putting super glue on the back side. Then I hope I can cut that off after it dries and not have too much of a seam. I'm also going to put a thicker layer down here at the base of each one. You can see it laying there. I haven't glued it in place yet. This little piece is a one inch spacer. And if I do it just right, each one of these will be one inch apart. And That'll do it for this segment. I've had some triumphs and some tragedies, but I've weathered the storm. I'll continue working a few more weeks pretty steady, and uh, I might be able to get it completely built within just a few weeks. So this is Boiler Dan 1, where my motto is, I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing, and I keep learning more and more about model shipbuilding. As always, thanks for watching.